Okay. So my name is Josh Tramiello, and I am the founder of a company that we're calling BevScore slash Beverly. Um, this started for me a year and a half ago. My friend's mom was a realtor who was showing a property. She didn't come back from showing that property. Five days later, we found her body. And it kept me awake at night. At the time, I was in law school. I was trying to pay attention to my classes, and I was reading through news reports and crime blogs and trying to understand what had happened. And it didn't make any sense. How could this have happened? And I designed a security system and didn't really do anything with it for a while. About uh, seven months ago, I submitted the designs for that security system to a startup competition in North Dallas at Node. And we ended up winning that competition, which was great. And from there, BevScore has evolved. And we just got into the App Store with a functional uh, working version of it three weeks ago. So what is the? Thank you. So that's the story. So what is BevScore? What is it that we do? What is the problem we're trying to solve? Technology has done an amazing job of bringing people together. You click once for an Uber. You click once and swipe right, and you can have a date tonight. But how do you know that that person you're meeting, come on. You can laugh. It's OK. We're past the sad part. Um, how do you know that that person you're meeting is who they say they are? How do you have accountability for that meeting? So what we do is we're the first app to offer two-way, bilateral, GPS tracking and verification. So the use case for that is you're a realtor that's talking to somebody on an online platform. Now you need to meet them face to face. What you might do right now is meet them at your office, get their driver's license, scan it, maybe you run a background check, you try to get all their information. But if you can't run through that series of events because maybe your schedules don't match, maybe there's rush hour traffic, you risk either losing a potential client or meeting someone that's not safe. Enter BevScore. What we do is anytime two people are going to meet, they can meet using our platform. When you log into the platform, we verify your driver's license, your number through SMS, and we get GPS information from your phone. We see this for both parties, but we do not share this with both parties. So you see that the other person is verified, but you do not see their personal information. You can then pick a time and a place, and we will track the location of both devices up into the meeting. Then we have a dead man switch set to an alert, so we can check in with you and say, hey, was everything all right? If you don't check back in, we can alert your friends and family. So we see the problem is going across three major verticals, the real estate industry, Craigslist, and online dating. With Craigslist, billions of dollars in consumer goods are sold and exchanged every year. And a lot of people don't want to use it because they're afraid either for their person or they don't want to have large cash items when they're meeting a stranger. We can provide safety and security for that meeting. At the end of a meeting that you've completed using BevScore, we ask you, how was the person you met? Did you feel safe when you were meeting that person? And we give you an opportunity to build up a character score. Because 99.999% of people, when they meet, don't have an interaction that ends in an abduction or violence. People do what they say they're going to do for the most part. It's a minority of people who are bad actors. So we're allowing the people that are good out there. Just because that's a stranger does not mean they're a bad person. We want you to be able to build up a score so that other people can see this is a trustworthy person. I can trust them to come in my home to buy a couch. I can trust them to buy a used car in a parking lot or something like that where I would bring cash. Market opportunity. My slides are a little messed up. Um, when we did polling, the number one concern for female realtors was their physical safety when they showed a property. The number one concern for male realtors was they might not get a sale. And that is the kind of, the, I mean, it's, it's funny, but it also isn't. When you look at online dating, the average woman talks to 20 people before she meets a guy in real life. Her number one concern when she meets a guy in real life is that I might be accosted or hurt. The guy's number one concern is that she looks like her pictures. Again, it, it's funny, but it's funny kind of in the way that kicks you. And it goes, here we have tens of millions of people, hundreds of millions of people that use all of these different platforms we've been talking about. And there's this tremendous disparity where we ask women to engage in the product not feeling safe. We ask, all right.
Questions? So you're offering like this Good Samaritan service. How do you monetize? I'm not really concerned about that right now. Um, I think that we'll be able to make enough money off of white label advertising at a corporate level. For example, there's a lot of large companies that I've just kind of been shaming for the last five minutes. There's an opportunity for any one of them that's a large player to be our first partner. For example, even though the real estate industry sucks and it's not safe, Keller Williams could be the first name to sponsor us and that's worth money. So I think we can get away with that for a couple of years. So Josh, I, I missed something completely, so I'm sorry. Sure. So we both sign up. Yes. We're gonna meet. Yep. I abduct you from that meeting. Okay. How, how does any, what, I mean. Yes. Tell so, me, I don't understand the safety component. Yes. There is no app that could prevent a 200, or you from abducting me, right? <laughs> but what the app could do is give us information. And since it's a two-way system, and in order to get a verified profile, you've given me, along with other permissions, access to the GPS on your phone, I have a history now of just the person that I met with and where that person's been over the last few days, over the last few weeks. So we have a profile to start. We can't provide you absolute security, we can provide accountability for that meeting. And that adds up to security in the aggregate. You can set in it to alert your friends and your contacts list. So it's gonna say, hey, you know, she was at this meeting, something happened, check in, and then you can contact us and we're holding that information. Do you guys currently have partnerships with background databases or federal databases and or do you plan on doing in the future? So there's some free public ones that we can scrape. Even if we were going to do it exhaustively, we wouldn't be able to operate for free and it would increase uh, the time that it takes for us to have a verified account. Our initial goal is to make it extremely hard to get a repeat account. So by using the parameters that we're looking at, uh, SMS verification for a phone, a driver's license, you might be able to get on our system with a criminal record but you wouldn't want to, first of all, because now we're monitoring your behavior and you've given us a lot of location permissions. But separately from that, and I'm still trying to answer your question, I know it seems like I'm running around that I'm not, uh, you can make an online dating profile, call yourself TED55, be extremely uh, racist and derogatory to a bunch of people, then Match kicks you off and you just make TED56. Our system, you can't do that. We've identified who you are through your driver's license, these other parameters, you get one account. So if you act like an asshole, So yeah, uh, kind of bouncing Doesn't off matter what number that question. So let's say somebody uh, meets with someone else and they don't feel like that person's a good person, but the person is. They just you know had a bad day or you know uh, didn't the sa the sale didn't go well or whatever. Yeah. Uh, how does said bad person redeem themselves or how do they? Uh, if there's only one profile, how can yeah. they get back in the good graces? Yeah. Of Maybe she just didn't think your joke was funny. Right. So right. to answer that. Uh, we try to account for noise, so if we have a low sample size, then obviously there can be a lot of different things, which there's variance to that. One of the things that we're looking at for our scoring system is some people, they, they see the world in a negative light. So uh, there's this phrase that says, you wake up and uh, you run into a jerk, and then you go to lunch and you run into a jerk, and you go to dinner, you run into a jerk, it turns out maybe you were the jerk. So uh, we kind of discount people who have negative opinions of everyone. So that's some of the logic that's in the rating system. That answers that. So for some of the um, integrations you're talking about, like with Craigslist and dating apps, were you, oh, sorry, right here. There we go. Okay. Um, are you going to, are those something that have to be done int intimately or do you have APIs and yeah. offered to third parties, like smaller ones? We don't have to integrate with them and their use case already requires a medium shift. So if you're emailing someone anonymously on Craigslist and then you're actually going to meet, you're like, okay, I guess we should exchange phone numbers. In this case, since we have messaging on our app, you would now exchange BevScore usernames. If you're online dating, instead of exchanging that phone number, when you give someone your phone number, they can find out your residence, they can do a background check on you. you know, let's say you go on a date with that person and then you don't like that person, they can text you for weeks afterwards. Which that's probably happened to a lot of women here. On our system, you go on that meeting with that person and you don't like them, you never have to see them again. Or hear from them again. Um, in a um, in a situation where something bad happens, are you uh, liable in any way? That's a great question. I don't think so. I did drop out of law school. <laughs> I think it's a great thing you're doing. How do Thank we you. help you? You're welcome. 
Uh, we're currently fundraising, so if you know people that would be interested in that, currently we've bootstrapped it, friends and family. Uh, Tyler and Bones are back there. Their parents kick some money in. I've kicked some money in. So give us money. Thank you.